Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh -oh. we're here on, on lovely Lake Winnebago with Jerry Kane from the North Country. And we go back <laughs> to the earliest 70s where we first met. And I'm, I'm here to ask Jerry a little bit, uh, a little, little time perspective, a little history of his musical career. And, uh, and let, let's, uh, let's just open up with you. Think back to your early influences. What, what made you pick up the guitar? Maybe your first couple bands, what was going on? What were you listening to? A little summary of your career. Like everybody else, Jim, it was Chuck Berry, Buddy Holly, the Everly Brothers, Elvis, all that type of stuff. And I said, the reason I'm here at Dick's house, Dick Stark lived across the street from me. And I've known Dick since 1954. Oh. So we were literally hanging I didn't around. Know you were that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and Mal, you know, the three of us had this weekend. And since 1954, we would go up in my bedroom, Mal, Dick's bedroom, and there'd the, the Buddy Holly, Jerry Lee Lewis, and and then so we started taking guitar lessons about seventh grade, 1959, something like that. In fact, Dick was the first one who ever showed me anything on guitar. Uh -huh. So I give him credit. But then uh, Dick moved to Wisconsin in 1960. So he would come back during summers with a few of his, his friends. Well, like 1960, Dick comes back, it's him, it's Nick Christus, mm -hmm. you know, Lance, he was in a band called The Counts. So now, so I'm dabbling playing guitar through high school. I go to college, Menominee, Wisconsin, get in the local college band, do that for a while, that falls, meet some people from Marinette band called the Y4. We come down and play in Oshkosh. I see Dick and here's these people I've already, this is like uh -huh. 1966. I've met these guys in 62. Yep. So I was an unofficial, official member of the Oshkosh crowd, mm -hmm. by kind of by proxy. Mm -hmm. But I said all of us started the, the, the same way, just the early, the roots of rock and roll. And then yep. it just, you know, segued into that. The one thing I wanted to mention too, I mentioned before to Mike, at that birthday party and watching everybody play. I said, not at all patting any of us on the back, but yeah, I should. But how good everybody actually really, really is. Now, yeah. I met all you, everybody maybe 66, 67, and we kind of thought. Still got the fire. Yeah, kind of, I thought, well, this guy's good. Well, he's a nice guy and he says hi to me. So yeah, he's, hey, you play really good. Oh yeah, yeah, so do you, thanks. And then, but then to watch like 40 years later, go, you know what? We we weren't yep. barking up the wrong tree. Everybody up there is an excellent player. I was just, you know, literally in heaven just watching these guys play. The Man. Fox Valley Corps. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was, uh, I thought, great. You the know? Fox River Valley Corps of musicians <sighs> together. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Excellent, excellent players. I couldn't be happier with how good everybody was playing. And then seeing you, which, you know, if they don't know, I was in a band, Raw Meat, and we lived on... Jim's parents' farm, and that's when I first met a young Jimmy Clark. I told my <laughs> wife, Jim's got gray hair. She said, no, no, <laughs> that's impossible. He's my age. I said, well, <laughs> but it's been a great, not being too corny, just a, a, a great ride the whole time, knowing everybody and getting to play with, jammed with different people mm -hmm. and just the whole, I was telling Mike, you know, the whole thing we all grew up in, the beer bars which is gone. It's, it it never yeah. will return. Right. So only only a certain group of people in a certain age can understand what a beer bar was and it's us. Yeah. So yeah. you can tell the young people about it but you a, know. A, a, a fertile bar circuit where you could yep. get gigs, get paid, people showed up. And play more than two nights a week. Yeah. They had, you could play Wednesday. Th I said you know nowadays it is, I'm, I keep telling people I'm glad I, I'm as old as I am because you saw the day. Yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> want to be 22 years old right now yeah. try, in a band trying to make a living. Oh yeah, you know, they're playing for the door, they're playing for free, yeah. Yeah. they're playing for a pittance. Yeah. yeah, we actually not to mention trying to get on a record label well, or, or any of that. Although everyone can record now, you yeah, know, with the advances. That, that's the other thing. You know, and there's good music being produced all the time yeah. by all sorts of anywhere from 16 on, 16 up. You know tons of good music. There's never been a lag in good music. No, just check out YouTube. Yeah. Check out some of those young guitar players on YouTube. Yep. Again, I'm glad I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to, I don't have to worry about those dudes, but you know, if I was a young guy, I might want to watch some of those guys, you know, maybe, maybe carpentry. Is that hard to learn? Maybe I can be I a carpenter. So. Okay, yes. I'm not a, 
a real yeah, handy guy. I don't guy. know either. I know. <laughs> I, uh, but but the days of uh, raw meat, even before you came along, yeah. that was a big influence on me. Oh. Don Grinder showing me some chops. I mean, yep. taking taking time out to show me some chops. Of course, Ron Bullock found me a country gentleman about the <laughs> mid '60s. Boom! I bought it for 180 bucks. Oh, great price! And uh, and and played that all through the Jules Blattner band years from '70 to '81. And then I went to a Strat with this five guys a day jobs because I, uh, well, just needed it. Needed a little more chunk up there with Jules. You know, he's such a foundation. Yeah. That oh. I, I could play around and throw in little fills and the, and the Gretsch was working well for me. And, well, point being, I was tickled pink to have <laughs> a, a stream of musicians, you know, coming to the farm and living in the in, in old granddad's house. Yeah. And uh, listening to you, you were up there working on riffs. You could sight read, you know, that, that's all Chinese to me. Yeah. But you were up there working on jazz riffs, this, that, and the other. Uh, like I was showing off a little bit. Oh, well, just try, no, just trying to put some out. stuff. You were showing me stuff, and and I'd go out and see y'all play, and oh my goodness, and then, you know, a little after seventy, of course, I was off of Jules, you know, three hundred nights a year. Well, <laughs> that's what I mean. <laughs> Come crawling in sometimes at your house because yeah, it was morning yeah. when I'd return. <laughs> and then I'm going through the the next several years because after that I started playing, then Donnie Klusky and I started doing oh, the duo, yeah. and then I'm looking, I see, you know, Jules, you know, Warren Groovy, All Star Band. And then there's five guys with day job. Boy, that's, that's just Jim Clark's. So I said, wait a second. I'm kind of playing weekends here. And Jim Clark's playing six nights a week. What, what's going on here? I said, now I got to say, oh, I know Jim Clark. Oh, he's a good friend of mine. Just, you know, I said, gee, you turned it role reversal. Now you were the full-time working guy. I'm teaching guitar, well, playing weekends. In, you know, two bands, you know, yeah. and, and now with Cousin Russell, uh, band number three. Uh, but... I lucked out. I dropped. Jules Blattner picked us up. It was like, you know, did we earn well, this? No. But all of a sudden, boom. Good gig, you yeah. Know, we, we, we got to develop and write on his name. You know, bookings were endless. Five guys with day jobs. It was one one has been and four never beens. And, and well, we had a good run. <laughs> we had a I good saw it run. at Summer, the, you guys at Summerfest, oh, yeah. the name. And I yeah. thought it was a cool name. I, yeah. I said, wow, that's a great name. The only whammy we ever got was for the name, Wisconsin Music Award. It was oh, for, the, oh, for the name. Well, okay, <laughs> I would have voted in that one. And it was Mark Maga that said, what? I said, you know, that five guys would date, I just like that name. He said, well, Jimmy Clark's band. I said, what? <laughs> Good. That's even better. At least, <laughs> old cousin Jim's in the band, and it's, it's a great name, you know. Well, but, it was, uh, you know, Dr. Lee Weiskerber, you know, my, my ex brother in law, ooh. and uh, my ex wife got us together with David Pelz and, and uh, said, uh, Pels. Okay. Uh, you guys, you guys could should get together. So, we, first time we ever made any noise was at my ex wife's parents' uh, parents' house or mother's house. And, and Lee had great talent as a singer. And then several bass players later, Ed Wagner came in. He had a great voice. So together, you know, they could sing very well together. And uh, we had Bill Conley, the alderman from uh, from uh, Mequon, who was superb on keyboards. So, you know, it, well, so it worked out. Then he left. And, uh, but uh, we just rolled on for 18 years. And, uh, I was going to say er <clears throat> the Milwaukee thing earlier. Uh, the college band I was in, the Benders, which actually uh, on the Garage Band circuit, one of those records went for two thousand twenty-five dollars. Oh, oh. uh, no, claim to fame and Garage Band '66. But the drummer and singer in the Benders was Paul Barry, who had Barry's, Barry's truckers. truckers. Yeah. So I just went into Paul, oh five six years ago. I had a great time. Hadn't seen him in thirty some years, yep. but. All those years I see Barry's truckers. Very Actually, successful. I should, oh, they yeah. were. I mean, great. And our keyboard joint quit us okay. to join them. <laughs> and I always thought, I should get a hold of Paul and just get a job with Barry's truckers. I thought, wow. Well, I mean, he's already said he had his own successful band. But I think I think it, they hung up their spurs. They did. Yeah. I just talked. He's yeah. down in Florida now in the winter and up here in the... Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's just so many, yeah, just so many bands. But you, <coughs> you and I have a great history together. Well, well, uh, you know, I don't, and uh, well, yes. from, from harm hick, farm hick to a little mutual respect, but I, I, know, I know how you play. You're up, up here I, somewhere. Uh, yeah, I owe but you, I owe you the, money. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and that white duck album. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't 
still got one too. Hey, damn it, yeah. brought that up on camera. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get one. He'll get one. You heard it. The White Duck <laughs> album. Don and Mario. Yep. But Don, you... Don was one of the the oh. best voices yep. to come out of the valley. Yeah, he was definitely. Yeah. And then it's art. You know, the, he's the most talented guy I've ever met. His art, his oh, singing, his paint. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's just it's just a case. One of those guys that should be a superstar yeah. by now. Oh, but yeah. you know, I we were talking about that last yeah. night. Yeah. You always think, you know, with the, if you got the talent, and I'm not saying me because like guys like Don, okay, and then they're going to make it for sure. And then as time goes on, well, they don't make it. I go, wow, there's actually people really talented who don't make it. Then the more people you start meeting, I say, wow, you know, most people who are really talented don't make it. My father you know? told me at a young age, some of the, he was a jazz musician, you know, sax and clarinet from the 30s on till he couldn't breathe anymore. Uh, yeah. But he said, the best jazz players are barbers. <laughs> you know, the best jazz players yep. are doing something else. My girlfriend's father in, co in college, and I said, you know, I was quitting college and I'm going to join a band. He says, well, hope you hope you got a good driving record. And I, what? You'll be driving taxi. I go, oh, <laughs> he said, all musicians are cab drivers. I said, okay. So, uh, but when come out to Well, me, to know. top it off, the the uh, Mike Meidel party slash reunion was a winner. We got to do it more of those. Maybe well, we haven't got 30 years left, so they better no, no. be sooner. I was thinking maybe on a, a bi-monthly basis, just hopefully we can keep the same crowd in here. You know, I don't want to, yeah, you don't wait well, 30 years now. Jerry Kane, thank you so much. Jim Clark, it was a pleasure meeting you, the whole thing we've been through. I got to go, go play a gig in Zittau. It's, and see again, I got it's nothing. It's a long way down. I got nothing. Where are you playing? Zittau? A mile south of Zittau. Cream, remember? Cream ate at Zittau. Cream, the band Cream, yeah. stopped at the northeast intersection of Zittau for a hamburger on the way to play You're Stevens the one Point. who told me the story. Yeah. I, be, I still repeat that. Jim Marks <laughs> rode, rode the school bus or, or bumped into him. He said, well, yeah, these British guys stopped in. <laughs> and the farmers were giving them a little shit, and uh, they said, well, if you're musicians, why don't you play us a tune? Give us $10,000 and we will. And they, they yeah, anyway, they, they tipped uh, Jim Marks five bucks for a 35 cent hamburger. Oh. Or, you know, Eric well, Clapton, Jack Bruce, whatever. You what got the, it. the hell's the drummer's name? Ginger Baker. Oh, Ginger Baker, yeah. In Zittau, Wisconsin. The place. Well, see, once again, you got a gig. I got nothing going on. I'm hanging around here with my friends and gonna have a few beers. Good. And wait for the next Mike Might All party. Enjoy yourself. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs>